I think it's safe to say that we are in the dupe era right now of the beauty community. We were here once before. I feel like dupes kind of died out and now they are back with a vengeance. Oh my gosh. Elf specifically is coming out with dupes. They're namely duping Charlotte Tilbury. Like they are coming for Charlotte Tilbury, but they've also duped some benefit products. I mean, they are really out here duping stuff. And I thought that I would just give you my opinions on some dupe products that are out there. I have the originals here and I'm gonna compare them to the dupes and let you know what I think. I will say overall, like I, at the end of the day, tend to be the type of person who will always want the original. So I know that's not everyone. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just telling you what I've learned about myself over the years is that if let's say Charlotte Tilbury, I'm breaking my products right now, has a product like the Hollywood Flawless Filter, I will always, and I mean always, wanna try this. No matter how many dupes are out there, no matter how many people tell me it's the same, this dupe is the same, this dupe's even better, I just need to know in my soul which one I like, I need to try it. But I also totally get why people would want dupes. They're cheaper. Maybe they're from brands that you wanna buy from. Maybe they're more accessible to you. And even if you can afford the more expensive product, maybe you wanna save that money and spend it on other things. Maybe makeup's not as important to you, but you just want the look that's popular or a product that's gonna work for you. So I totally get it either way. And I thought I would just let you know my thoughts on these dupes. I'm gonna try not to be too nitpicky, but I can't lie. Like I definitely wanna let you know the tiny differences that I feel like are important or that I notice from these products and just hopefully it'll help you make a decision on whether or not you want to try it. I know dupes are so popular. I feel like if anything's even in a similar package or color scheme as another product, it's like immediately deemed a dupe. And I think I'm just going to go a little bit deeper than that today and let you know my thoughts. So I hope you guys will enjoy. Let's just get into it. Let's go. Before we get into the video though, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Scentbird. I've worked with Scentbird a few times on the channel already, but if you guys don't know, Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service and it can be a great way to be able to test out fragrances and perfumes without having to commit to a full-size bottle. I love fragrance and one of the things getting into the fragrance world was realizing how expensive these bottles are. I mean, designer bottles can be pretty pricey, but when you get into the world of niche and indie, they can go up even more. Like it gets really expensive and I feel like Scentbird, if you're just getting into fragrance, can be a great way to sample some fragrances, really get to know what your scent profile is, what scents you like, if you're someone who doesn't wanna to commit to a full bottle because you like to change your mind a lot or wanna change your scent with the seasons, it can be a great way to be able to switch those scents out without having that full bottle cost. And I'm really happy with the selection that Scentbird has. They have designer perfumes like Prada, Gucci, things like that, things you know. But what I really like is that they have been really expanding their niche and indie offerings. They have things like Skylar there. They have some clean beauty scents. They also more recently, I just checked this like right now, they have Mind Games on there, which is like a new niche brand I really, really want to check out. So I'm really excited about that specifically. And so I love that Scentbird is really just diversifying. There's just so many options, definitely something for everyone over there. This is what they look like. You get an eight mil decant of whatever perfume you pick. You get to pick your cue. So you don't get surprised with some random perfume you don't like. You get to pick the one you want to try. And these cases are really easy to take off and switch out your vials every single month. So they're really cute. And I also think they're really aesthetic and pretty looking. I got to choose three different perfumes this month. So first off, I wanted to try a Room 1015 perfume. They have like a cherry punk scent that I enjoy. They also have like a cannabis scent and it's a niche house. I definitely want to explore more. And so I wanted to try out Atrimental and this has notes of bergamot, lemon, cardamom, black pepper, and saffron in it. This one's definitely a niche offering. I smell some of that like citrus in here, but I also smell the saffron, which gives it to me almost something kind of latexy. <laughs> That's what I'm getting from this saffron anyway, something kind of medical. And then it has a little bit of spiciness with the cardamom and black pepper. Definitely one I'm gonna keep testing. This is a more unique offering for sure. There's no sweetness in this. I wish there was a little bit. Next, I picked up Bite Me from Confessions of a Rebel. This one has an apple note in it. And so the name Bite Me with the apple note, I was like, let's try it out. Plus I've been pleasantly surprised by past Confessions of a Rebel scents that I've tried. I really like, I think it's called like Bitch Please. That one's so good. It's like musky, like really good. Like I want the bottle. Anyway, back to Bite Me. This one has notes of strawberry, red apple, vanilla orchid, jasmine, and golden rum in it. It definitely has that fruitiness. There's almost something, I want to say kind of like waxy going on in here to me, like almost kind of powdery. It has like a softness to it, a really nice, just kind of chill, fruity scent. I like this one. Definitely not as much as that Bitch Please though. That one's so good. And then last, my favorite, 
favorite pick out of the three here. This one is so good because it kind of smells like Baccarat. And if you don't know, if you're not on my fragrance channel, which if you're into fragrance, come say hi over there. This one from Dime smells so good. This is called Dan Le Bois. This has notes of wood, leather, vanilla, sugar, please. That sounds amazing. Saffron and jasmine. It definitely gives that sweet, airy, woody quality that Baccarat has. Like it's not exact, but it's pretty dang close. And I actually recently went on a trip and I brought this as my travel spray for inside my purse, just, you know, for touch-ups on the go, wanna refresh when you're in the airport, you know what I mean? And I actually had someone confuse this for Buckrod, so that is what I'm talking about. I really, really love this one from Dime. So those are my picks this month. If you guys are wanting to try out Scentbird, you can use my code LaurenMB55 to save 55% off your first month. That'll make the first month a little over over $7, which I feel like it's a really great way to try out some perfume. Again, they have so many options over there. It's available in the US and Canada, and I'd love to know what you pick out if you decide to try it. Thank you guys so much for your support. It's exciting to be able to work with Scentbird again, and I just appreciate you guys. So thank you so much. Thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video, and let's get into the dupes. I'm gonna start off with this product from e.l.f. This is the Sun Touchable Woe Glow SPF 30, like, basically shimmering makeup primer sunscreen type thing. And it's for sure trying to dupe the super goop glow screen. Oh my God, that is so, I wanna say super gloop. <laughs> It's not, it's super goop. Glow screen, this is SPF 40, so right there already, we're having a difference in SPF. But you guys know I've been trying to be really good about my sunscreen and I've actually really enjoyed the super goop. So this retails for $38 for 1.7 fluid ounces and the e.l.f. one retails for $14. And this is essentially the same, it's 1.69 fluid ounces. So same amount of product, definitely a really big difference in price. It's under half the price for the e.l.f. one. I will say to me, these are comparable, like they do a similar thing Thing, but they are not dupes to me. And when I, okay, when I think of a dupe, I want them to be pretty damn similar. Like I want them to not really have any differences at all. Like texturally, the shine that it gives, you know, the way it performs throughout the day, the color, like I want those things to be exact. So I find these quite different actually though. So when it comes to the super goop, I really do love this as a sunscreen with a glow to it. It has a pretty high shine on it. This baby gets shiny. This also comes in different colors, whereas the e.l.f. one does not but I actually don't like this under makeup. This is a bit thicker than the e.l.f. one and I find that this just doesn't play really nicely under things I'm gonna layer on top. It just makes my skin look a little heavy, a little bit like cakey almost, but on its own, just like if I'm gonna be working out, going on a walk, island vacation vibes, that type of thing when I want some SPF coverage, but I like that glow and I like the tint that this gives, gives me a little bit of coverage. I think this one's really great and I love it for that. When it comes to the e.l.f. one, this one doesn't have nearly as much of a tint. It really doesn't have a tint to it at all. It has a nice glow, nothing as glowy as a super goop. This one's just a little more tame. Like it gives a beautiful glow, but it is not like extra glowy. This one is verges on metallic almost, honestly, to be, to be quite frank. I love it, but that's the truth. This is like a thinner formula and I actually feel like this is a lot more delicate on my skin. I feel like I can't see it as much and this one makes a way better primer and like under makeup item. So I feel like both of them are really great when I'm really just wanting only one thing on my face and I'm not gonna be layering products over it. I do prefer the Super Goop and I've repurchased this even having the e.l.f. It just wasn't doing the same thing so I picked this up again, but I still think the e.l.f. has a place and I really do like this one as well. So they're both really good options. Definitely you're gonna save some money with the e.l.f. one and I think it's a good one if you're looking for a glowy sunscreen, this one might be a good option for you, especially if you wanna layer makeup on top. Why is my voice doing that? All right, more glowy kind of base products, or you can use these in other ways too, but the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, mine is just looking really destroyed. All of the writing, or almost all of it, has come off at this point, but this is such a classic. I mean, everyone, I feel like, love, like so many people love this. There have been many, many dupes that have come out. I feel like most notably though, e.l.f. has duped it. This is their Halo Glow, and it is very similar. So the Charlotte Tilbury has like, the doe foot wand on it and the elf does the same thing. If anything, they've upped them with the wand. This is like a bigger, bigger doe foot. <laughs> This is a bigger doe fit for sure. When it comes to price, the Charlotte Tilbury one retails for $49 and the e.l.f. one comes out to $14. So, I mean, 
it's so weird to like say the cheaper option and like the cheap thing is $14 to me. That still like rings as expensive, but obviously it's a great value comparedly to the Charlotte Tilbury one. Now I feel like these are also comparable, but I, I mean, and I get what they're doing and I feel like you don't need both of these if you're not into like the little specifics. They definitely work as similar products for sure, but I do feel like there are some substantial differences and I tend to prefer the Charlotte Tilbury over the e.l.f. First off the Charlotte Tilbury color is different than the elf and this is the lightest shade I have the shade one in the elf and the shade one in the Hollywood flaws filter and you can already just see next to each other that they're different I find though when I actually put the elf on and blend it out I don't notice it being um, too much of an issue like I don't notice it being too dark on me but that potentially could be an issue depending on how light your skin is and all of that like how much it's gonna show up so definitely difference in color and really as much as this gives a little bit of a glow. I find this gives a little bit more coverage um, in the color that it gives as opposed to just the shimmer or kind of like highlighter effect that comes off. And I find that the Charlotte Tilbury one is just slightly more fine and kind of ethereal and glowy in a way that is just so beautiful. And not that the e.l.f. doesn't make things look beautiful. It is beautiful, but it just, it's not quite the same, at least to me. Again, this is just my preference. So I still prefer the Charlotte Tilbury, but both of these products tend to like accentuate my pores here. So I try not to put them on that. And I do tend to use both of these as like under glowy primers, as opposed to on top of makeup. And I feel like if you really wanted the Hollywood Flawless Filter or the dupe to be more of a highlighter, like liquid highlighter on top of makeup, I would also go with the Charlotte Tilbury over the e.l.f. just because of color as well. Like I said, the color on this one and kind of the base of this comes out just a little bit more and I feel like it's not gonna layer on top as nicely as the Charlotte Tilbury, but underneath primer, I feel like they're okay. So those are my thoughts on that. Both are still good. Again, I just think it depends on what you're wanting to spend and I definitely enjoy a glowy base, but I tend to like one that is built into a primer, whereas those don't give me priming effects. They really just give me the glow. And so um, I kind of like finding the the mix like of a skincare moisturizer primer glowy highlighter thing all in one so i would say in general um i don't know i don't use these as much as i do other products no matter if it's the charlotte tilbury or the elf okay continuing on this one i've probably mentioned before but i thought i would throw it in the video i love this nars cream bronzer you guys know that i have it in the shade laguna one i've hit pan on it it's just so good it's a cream bronzer that has like a matte finish but it's really easy to use it almost goes from a cream to a powder so it just blends and buffs on so easy so seamlessly I just I really really love it this is quite pricey though at $38 but I love it I feel like it's one of those just super easy to use products you guys know I've raved about this I feel like something super comparable though in formula like, like that kind of cream to powder formula is from elf here it is the putty bronzer and I'm talking about the putty bronzers that don't have any shimmer in them they did come out with luminous ones and I like those as well. I don't feel like I get actually a ton of the luminosity from them, but I just prefer the original putty bronzer from e.l.f. This is the shade Tan Lines, and I feel like maybe in color they're not the most comparable, but I find they're perfectly fine. Like for dupes, I really feel like this compares in formula. If you're looking for a formula similar to this, I feel like for the $7, I believe that the e.l.f. one is, it's a great product. I really love both of them. Again, I'm the type of girl that's always going to go for the more expensive one overall. I mean, I'm like deep in the makeup world, y'all know that, okay? But the e.l.f. one, if you're on a budget, you don't wanna spend a lot of money, you wanna save some space even, this is a great option if you're looking for a really easy cream bronzer to use. I personally like using just a brush, so I'll like swirl my brush in, either one, whichever one I'm using, and use that to blend onto my face, and they're both really great, and I feel like this is super comparable to the NARS. They also have a good shade range, and so, um, yeah, that's a good one if you're looking for a dupe. I feel like that one, to me, kind of meets the standards. Obviously, there's slight differences, blah, 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 blah. I feel like even for how nitpicky I can be, they are really great dupes for each other. Or I mean, the e.l.f. is a dupe for the NARS anyway. <laughs> All right, moving on. I forgot to tell you guys that on my eyes, I did one like dupe inexpensive eyeshadow palette and one that was the original. So take your guesses now. Um, guess which one is which. <laughs> I'll cover some other things and then we'll get into it. <laughs> Continuing on, if you're looking for similar formulas, I 
feel like the e.l.f. putty blushes are very, very similar to the Janessa Myricks putty blushes that came out. I don't think they call them putty. They're like yummy skin blurring blushes. This one is in the shade Bellini. And then I have the e.l.f. one here. This one's in the shade Bahamas and they are so similar. These colors just happen to be similar, but really, again, I'm talking about the formula. If you really like the formula of the yummy balms from Danessa Myricks, I think you're gonna like the putty blushes as well. They just do something really similar where they're a little bit blurring and again, they're like a cream that does go kind of powdery as well. Um, I feel like the Danessa Myricks has just a little bit more pigmentation and specifically between these colors, the e.l.f. one's a little bit more muted, just slightly, but overall so, so similar. The Danessa Myricks retail for 25, these again retail for seven and I feel like it's a nice one. So if you were looking for a similar formula to this, you want some other color options even because I feel like a lot of the ones in the Danessa Myricks range, I don't know, they're all kind of warm and orangey, a lot of them, or like maybe a little bit berry toned, but I felt like the range itself was pretty close to each other. There weren't a bunch of distinctly different ones. I would check out the e.l.f. putty blushes if you haven't. I mean, these have been around for a while, but I definitely find these to be very, very similar in formula and they even have some similar color offerings as well as a few different ones in the e.l.f. range. So that is a dupe that I think is pretty damn good. I think that's a good dupe. And I like the Danessa Myricks. I haven't really talked about these a ton. They're very pigmented. And so for me, like I said, I'm usually the person who would love the original more. Not that e.l.f. came out with these to dupe the Danessa Myricks. They didn't. These are out before, but I actually might prefer the e.l.f. ones over the Danessa or like they're completely equal in my eyes just because I haven't completely like fallen head over heels for the Danessa Myricks ones. Not that I don't like them. It's just, I have so many other cream blushes I like more. So yeah, there's some like mini reviews also on that. Okay, all these poofs are probably the main reason I did this video. I bought a ton of the e.l.f. ones when they came out. These are the Halo Glow Beauty Wands and I already had quite a few of the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Wands. So I definitely wanted to just see how they compare. So we'll talk about the bronzers first. And you know, something about this, I was so excited for the e.l.f. ones, I'm not gonna lie. Like I ordered these right on launch because I also knew these are gonna sell out most likely. I was like, this shit's gonna sell out. The Halo Glow Charlotte Tilbury dupe sold out for like ever. And I didn't wanna not be able to get my hands on them and let you guys know my thoughts and all that. So anyway, starting with the bronzers, I do have the contour wand from Charlotte Tilbury and I bought two of the e.l.f. ones. I got the fair light shade and I got the light medium. The fair light in the e.l.f. is more of a cool tone. So it definitely has that kind of grayish undertones for more of a contour. Whereas the light medium had a lot more warmth to it. So I thought this would be more like a traditional bronzer to me. These retail for $9. The Charlotte Tilbury wand, I think is in like the $42 range, like a lot of money for these Charlotte Tilbury products. Yeah, $42, I just confirmed, it's a lot. These to me are similar in packaging, but that's kind of it when it comes to these like specifically the bronzer products. The e.l.f. ones, I actually really quite like these. They're probably my favorite and what I think I'm gonna get the most use out of from the line, to be honest. I'm still kind of getting my thoughts on the contour, like the fair contour shade, but the bronzer one, I really like. I feel like it gives a nice warmth. It's pretty easy to blend out. These don't have any shimmer to them. They are like a matte cream formula and I think they're pretty easy to apply. I kind of wish that the uh, lids on them didn't twist. The Charlotte Tilbury ones just kind of snap on and these are twisted twisting and I don't know, it's like a small difference, but kind of annoying to me <laughs> if I'm being honest, but packaging, like they look really cute. They definitely are giving the wand vibe overall. When it comes to Charlotte Tilbury, I'm actually not a big fan of the contour wand. I don't like the color of this that much. This looks really dark, but it blends out really easily and really sheerly. Sometimes I do like this and I love how effortless this is to blend on. I do think this is easier to use, like a little more user-friendly, honestly, than the e.l.f. ones. These they kind of dry down a little bit faster. So I feel like you have to work a little bit faster with these, but this is like, it goes on a little bit dark, you're kind of worried. And then you just start blending it out with a brush and it's kind of like magic how it blends out so easily. The thing is this kind of turns a little red. Like as far as a contouring or bronzer goes, this is a little bit red on me sometimes and I don't always love that look. I wish that she would come out with more shades. I don't know why that hasn't happened yet. I feel like we definitely could use more bronzer shades, contour shades, different shades, deeper shades, like all of that. So um, I think these are actually like just similar product types, like liquid with a poof. 
you know, but in terms of actual formulation, I don't find them similar, but I actually think that the e.l.f. ones are pretty good. And there's aspects about this Charlotte Tilbury formula I really like, but the color is not good. So I don't know what that means. It's not dupes to me, I don't think. Where I think there are closer dupes going on are with the shimmery blushes and the highlighter wands from e.l.f. So I got a lot of these. I got two of the blushes. I got the blush shade in Candlelit, and I also got the blush shade in Rose You Slay, and then I got Champagne, and also rose quartz in the highlighters. I'm pretty dang happy with the amount of shine that's coming off of these products. I feel like that's something that's so special and beautiful about the way the Charlotte Tilbury wands go on. They are just like thin and just blend out so easily. They just look so ethereal. The shimmer that's in here feels so refined. It's not sparkly or glittery. And I feel like these are doing a really decent job at creating that same thing. Are they slightly different? I personally think so, but I think overall, all really really close dupes like they aren't just liquids with poofs they are more similar to me anyway they aren't exact color dupes I feel like at least with the colors I have of each one but some of them are definitely close enough I think getting the the liquids on this one it made me realize like oh I don't use like the liquid highlighter that much I finally bought the spotlight wand I think sometime last year and you know even as much as this is really pretty I don't use it as much as like a powder highlighter or even a cream highlighter I can kind of tap on and so in that way it doesn't really matter if it's all for Charlotte Tilbury if I'm not using it you know what I mean I definitely find like my original purchase of pillow talk which is beautiful I love this it's kind of this blushy highlighter on me is the right choice and like my favorite color overall and yeah I think these are solid if you're looking for Charlotte Tilbury dupes again nine dollars versus 42 definitely a huge savings there but like with everything like you don't just need to get a dupe of a product that's really popular if you weren't even interested in what that product was at the beginning. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. I know the dupe craze can be like, you know, I just feel like it's a lot of hype. There are so many dupe videos and everything's a dupe and you know, I, it just feels like a lot. So something just keep in mind in the frenzy of it all, okay. That being said, this Flower Beauty one, another liquid with a poof uh, little thing going on. This is the spotlight. It's like the highlighter. I actually don't like this one that much. This just has more base on it. I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury again has that more of ethereal kind of almost a glass look. It doesn't have a ton of the base on it necessarily in an opaque way at least and I feel like this just is a little bit more opaque. It's not as delicate. It's not as elegant looking. It's just not as good of a dupe. So I would go with the elf ones over the uh, Flower Beauty. Just thought I'd mention that since I have this. It's not horrible, but it's definitely just not a dupe and I have the other one. So yeah, anyway, thought I'd mention. All right, drum roll. Have you picked which eye is which? Which eye is the expensive eye? Which eye is the dupe eye? Can you tell? Dun, dun, dun. Okay. This is the dupe eye, this is the expensive eye, and the palettes that I used are really one of my favorites and a dupe of one of my favorites. So the expensive palette is the Rose Quartz palette from Huda Beauty. This is it. You guys already know my love for this. I love this freaking palette so much. It is so beautiful, but it is $65. It's quite expensive, <laughs> but I really feel like this one's worth it. Like, I love it. I love the ethereal shimmers that are in here. I really love the tones of these colors. I feel like it's really wearable for every day. It's just beautiful. But recently, Alter Ego came out with the dupe this is the Coastal palette, and I do have a code with Alter Ego, so I'll leave that down below if you're interested in shopping. But this retails for $20, and all right, here we go. You can tell that these are definitely supposed to be dupes for each other. Not only does it have like the swirled shadows the same, but it also even has like the goopy shadow <laughs> that's in here, which is like a cream with like these balls of uh, shimmer pigment in it. Not my favorite shade, not gonna lie, but they even duped that in this baby, okay? And this retails for $20, and like I said, this is $65. So definitely a really big savings here. And my biggest thing with this palette as I've been testing it is that I wanted to make sure the really ethereal, like beautiful shimmery shades were similar enough because that is one of the things I love about the Rose Court. There are like three really, really beautiful flaky shimmery shades in here that I just feel like push this over the top, make it my favorite. So I wanted to make sure these were the same. And I have to say as much as, like I said, I'm a girly who's <laughs> gonna always go for the original 
channel if I can. I can't deny that this palette is really great quality and I've experienced that a lot of the time with Alter Ego. I've done a video in the past with the Natasha Denona Gold Palette and their dupe for the gold palette. You know, I did a side by side, I did all this stuff and I mean, they really do nail textures and tones and all of that, especially for the discounted price. So I am very happily impressed with this palette. So far, all of the ethereal shades, when they're on my eyes, I did a look earlier with this from this video. I actually filmed this video technically once and I was doing like half my face one and half my face the other, which let me know if you like that idea, but it was just getting weird. Like I had too much to say while I was doing the makeup and I just felt like, we just need to talk, okay? Like I really did have too much to say to be doing my makeup also. But the look that I did for that video, like I'm telling you, it looked like basically exact, basically exactly the same. You couldn't tell the difference. Like no one would even know when I did one eye with the extensive palette and one eye with the coastal palette. So um, I'm really, really pleasantly surprised with the way the shimmers have been done in here. The pigmentation of the mattes I feel like is pretty dang similar as well. The two differences I can say from how I've been testing it, the shade Shore in here is not as duochromatic as the one in the Rose Quartz, which has a little bit of like a pink uh, flip to it or like iridescence to it, which is not one of my favorite shades necessarily in either palette So it's not that big of a deal to me I actually kind of prefer this one because it tends to be better for inner corner and brow bone when it doesn't have that like hot pink Reflect and then the shade sand that's in here, which is actually the one that's on my eyelid today It's the dupe for energize, which is a beautiful taupey Aluminum color like it's not silver. It has a taupe to it, but it's definitely more cool tone leaning that energize shade in here is a little bit smoother, whereas actually is a little bit more textured and a little bit more flaky and shimmery. So um, I like both of them. They're just a little bit different. I love the smoothness of the Energize, but I also, you guys know, love a flaky shimmery shade. So the difference on that one isn't a big deal to me, but I do find them different. But other than that, so far, I mean, really great dupe for the price if you're looking for it. I can't lie, they do a really good job every single time with their eyeshadows. So that is what I think about those. I know I've teased that a while ago, finally coming back and giving you guys some answers, but I definitely think they're very, very similar. I think I have four more things to talk about. I'm gonna try to keep it short and sweet. I wanted to update you guys on the Charlotte Tilbury and the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow and Ripple because this is one of those hypnotizing little pop shots that you guys know I love, but they are so expensive, $34 uh, for a single eyeshadow. <laughs> I know it's a lot of money. This is the Pillow Talk Ultraviolet. This sold out very fast. I'm not sure if it ever came back. I know these are like limited edition. They really don't stay around. And a lot of people were saying that Ripple from ColourPop is a very, very similar color. And it definitely gives the same vibes. If you're just looking for a very similar color to the one from Charlotte Tilbury, I think this is a really good option, but they do differ. And I'll show you them on my eyes just to give you guys an idea. The Charlotte Tilbury has more of like a satiny finish so this has no sparkle to it there's no like larger pieces of sparkle or glitter in this one it really comes off kind of velvety and gives a nice kind of glow shine instead of a high metallic or again sparkly shine to it and it has a little bit more of like a pinky base to it so this is one of those like purples that has a little bit of a violet blue thing a little bit of a pink thing going on but I feel like in the base of the shadow you get a lot more of that pink whereas with ripple this one is a little bit more sheer overall and it definitely has a little bit more sparkle to it which is super fun like I love sparkle so both of them are beautiful to me I actually I like both of them they definitely have different qualities to my eye I know <laughs> I know they give off definitely a similar color but this one I feel like pulls a little bit cooler it doesn't have that warmer pink base to it um, and again it has more of these shimmers it's stunning like I love ripple and for six dollars over thirty four dollars and the fact that this isn't even available I definitely think it's a really great option. If you're just trying to like recreate an eye look and someone was using this, I definitely think this is going to get the job done. And so they're similar to me. That's what I'm going to say. I think they're definitely similar. They're going to give a very similar look, but they do have some distinct differences, I think. And I feel like you can actually see them on my eyes. Not necessarily enough for most makeup lovers, but I don't mind having both. Last for eyeshadows, I wanted to talk about these new shadow sticks from ColourPop. I ordered all of these myself. I got a lot of the neutral shades as well as this kind of like chartreuse olive -y, gold 
in green color called Flex, and these are their new and improved shadow sticks. I actually have a coupon code with ColourPop right now just for the month of May, so I'll leave that down below if you're gonna order. I think it's like five off of 25, and I believe the code is just Lauren5, but that'll only be for the month. Just thought I would mention it here. Anyway, I was so excited that they reformulated these because I did not like the last version of the ColourPop uh, shadow sticks. I didn't like them. They were just kind of chunky. The glitters in them were chunky. I didn't feel like they went on that evenly. They kind of blended out into nothing. And I'm so happy to say that I really, really love these ones from ColourPop. I would say my favorites are Social Light and I really like Honey BB actually. I've been using this one a lot. I just went to Arizona and I use this every single day underneath my makeup and it was just so pretty. Every day that I used it, I was tempted to not put on more eyeshadow because I just loved this on its own, which um, I tend to use these shadow sticks as bases like from any brand, but this one was like getting me. I really liked it. To me, the way that these are formulated, they have a really nice fine shimmer to them. They look expensive. They're like highly reflective. And obviously when you blend that out, it does get a little bit less, but I just find them so comparable to the high end like Laura Mercier Bobbi Brown shadow sticks. There are lots of shadow sticks out there from a lot of different brands. And I feel like there are a lot that are comparable to these higher end ones, which are like 30, again, two, $34 a piece. And these retail for, I want to say they're $8. But I really felt like the color selection and just the way that these looked were very, very similar. All of the ones from Laura Mercier and Bobbi Brown do lock down. And I was kind of confused initially because the first time I like swatched these, tried these, they did dry down. And so in my head, I'm like, these dry down, which they do, but they just take a little bit longer. So I do want to say that I have no issues with wear time on them. Like again, I've worn these quite a bit, especially Socialite and Honey BB. And I don't have any issues with them creasing or anything like that, but I do feel like they take a little bit more time to dry down if you're not like thinning them out. So just keep that in mind. But otherwise they're just beautiful. And I feel like they definitely match up to the elegance and the shine that the Laura Mercier ones give. So I would give these a try, even if you didn't like the past ones from ColourPop, these ones I've really, really been loving. And last, I am putting a lip oil to the test. This is from NYX and it is the Fat Oil Lip Drip. I think that's what it's called. Fat Oil Lip Drip and this is the shade Mist Call. And I recently in the Sephora sale picked up the Infamous. Dior Glow Lip Oil. This one's in the shade 01 Pink. I had the NYX before I had the Dior and I just feel like this is just like a gloss. I think it's nice, but I, I don't know. I was just kind of like, okay, like, yeah, it's good. You know, it's fine. I wasn't like obsessed with it, but then I got the Dior one and I do like this. I'm not saying I'm obsessed with it. It's not like my favorite lip product ever. Like it beats everything out, but I do really like it. And then I put these on side by side, you guys. And I'm like, they are like the same. They're like, basically the exact same texture. And I feel like that goes to show you what packaging and marketing does. <laughs> That's, I'm telling you, this one did, it foiled me, okay? I really feel like this is such a similar formula. The way it feels on my lips is so similar. I feel like the way it wears is so similar. And these both have a slight pinky tint. I do feel like I get a little bit more of like that pH thing going on with the Dior one, but overall, so, so, so similar in texture. The Dior has more of a mint to it, whereas this doesn't doesn't really have much going on in terms of like flavor and it definitely doesn't have anything minty. So um, that could be something depending if you like mint, don't like mint, something that might be worthwhile to you. But yeah, this looks more opaque, but I'm telling you the way it shears on, I'm they look so, so similar. So I feel like this is actually a pretty good dupe, but to be honest, I still prefer the Dior one. I don't know if it's the packaging or just the way it feels. It feels like something's different about it. Actually feeling it on my lips. I don't think there really is, but I still prefer the Dior. I'm sorry. I don't know what it is. I really wanted to like these too. I was so excited for them, but I'm just like biased against them for some weird reason. And I don't even know why. I can't even tell you. I think these retail for like 12 though. And this is like 40. So definitely a price difference, but I still just can't get over that $12 for a lip gloss from NYX. Like what is happening? That's too much. <laughs> anyway, I think I've talked enough about dupes. Those are my opinions on some dupes. What I think is similar, what I think is different, what I think is comparable. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts. Are you a dupe person? Do you like getting dupes? Do you agree with these if you've tried both of them? Definitely let me know your opinions down below. Um, last year at the end of the video, I wanna again thank Sempered for sponsoring today's video. If you are interested in trying out a perfume over there, you can use my code LaurenMB55 to save 55% off. Again, that'll be down below, there'll be a link 
link. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring the video. And other than that, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.